Hi, welcome to my uh, introduction to my webinar. My name is Michael Pryor. I'm a computational designer at Nike's NXT Digital Innovation Team and uh, the design director of Design Morphine and the author of the Grasshopper plugin Pufferfish. Uh, in our uh, webinar, we'll be focusing on um, uh, Rhino 7 work in progress, um, the new sub D tools. Uh, in combination with Pufferfish, mostly Twisted Box tools, and we'll be focusing on uh, firstly creating different types of modules um, and cell types using sub-Ds uh, in Rhino 7 uh, and looking at that workflow um, going from sub-Ds to NURBS or sub-Ds to meshes or meshes to sub-Ds to NURBS um, and then uh, morphing those objects um, into uh, network lattice systems, um, uh, which can be used for all kinds of applications um, to lattices, facades, walls, um, yeah, all kinds of applications. So firstly is to get pufferfish, uh, which you can find on Food for Rhino. Um, you'll need version 2.9. Um, and I highly suggest before taking the webinar that you look at the pufferfish version 2.9 example files where there is an example for every component uh, in pufferfish and um, smaller um, workflow type examples and you can see a bunch of different types of um, applications there's a lot of lot of applications um, you know a lot of components to go through and uh, so we won't be going through them all uh, we'll mostly be focusing in the twisted box area um, while using some of the other components throughout to support the workflow. So firstly, you'll need Rhino 7 work in progress, uh, which will require Rhino 6 um, student, uh, which is I think called educational or a um, Rhino 6 commercial license, and you'll have free access to the Rhino 7 work in progress. And the main reason why we need that is the sub-D tools. Um, if you see here, there's a sub-D tab and also new to V7 where you can find sub-D. Um, in the sub-D tools, uh, which I have docked here, um, you'll see a bunch of tools uh, for creation, but also there's some tools that aren't here. Again, this is a work in progress for McNeil. Um, so not all the tools have icons yet. And even some of the icons the tools are incorrect. For instance, one is slide edge, where if you click it, it'll say unknown command slide edge um, because they've renamed it to slide, um, but haven't fixed the button yet. Um, so just keep in mind that this is work in progress, but it is the future of um, Rhino and McNeil's workflow. So even if you can't get access to Rhino 7, um, I highly suggest to, to check out this webinar um, to be at least informed of what the future standard of Rhino will be. So sub-D objects, uh, I just clicked here uh, to create a sub-D box. I'll switch to shaded mode. Um, are a unique type of object that are kind of like between a mesh and a, a nerve surface. And uh, the new selection system is by holding shift and control, you can select faces, you can select, you can select edges, um, edge change by double clicking. Same with faces, face chains um, by holding Shift Control and double clicking two faces, um, and you can also easily select vertices. A sub D is kind of like um, if you're familiar with Maya or something like that. It's a uh, no, very fluid clay type of modeling. Um, and uh, for instance, uh, if I come here and I scale this uh, by holding shift, you'll see how it, it's like almost clay-like. And then you can um, press control while you're doing that. So shift and control, and you can make new extrusions. This makes modeling um, for this kind of, of stuff very easy um, and very quick. So here I'm just I'm just again like selecting faces uh, with shift and control select face 
and, and then um, moving the face. And then if you just press control while moving the face, you can either extrude or pull the face. Um, and what's nice about this is if I go ahead and actually delete these faces, so just select an imitate delete. Um, and what we'll be looking at is like how to connect these things through twisted boxes. Um, right. So if I connect like things like that together, um, let's get more of them. So I'm just copying them over. And join it. And when you join, you have a option for how to select it. I'll select smooth, and you'll see now they've joined together as smooth sub D objects. Um, and the the nice thing is like once you have something like that, unlike a mesh workflow, um, I'll bring these here. Two things you can do is you can actually um, you can do extract control polygon. And now you have the mesh representation. So actually, you just want to put on my um, my mesh wires. So you have the mesh representation. And now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to smooth this together, you would have to do something like Weaver Bird. It's like Catmull Clark, um, which let's see here. Uh, So we'll set this mesh in. And we'll do a uh, Catmull Clark. All right, so now you'll see you smooth that together. Um, and it's basically the same, uh, it's the same geometry in essence. The difference is, is how many faces this mesh needs. And these faces, even at the uh, you know a uh, uh, fine grain level, they're still faceted. Whereas the the um, sub D's, which is kind of between mesh and nerves, is smooth. And the nice thing is you can then from sub D um, for like say manufacturing where you would need nerves or something like that, you can just easily um, go two nerves. So we'll just go two. nerves and um, you can convert meshes to nerves but what happens is you're just going to get like a bunch of um, you're just going to get a bunch of uh, faceted nerves faces right they're still faceted and it's a poly surface right but if you do it to a sub d two two nerves um you can choose to delete the input or not. I'll just keep it. So now you have your poly surface like as before, but like with the mesh, but the difference is they're not faceted. So they still keep the same curvature and there's a lot less faces to create that geometry. Um, so the, yeah, the, that's the kind of like advantage of that is that it's NURBS um, geometry that you can use for manufacturing um, and it's smooth instead of faceted. So you need a lot less faces. And we'll look at uh, in the webinar to both kinds of um, both kinds of geometry types um, and how to work with one, what's the advantage of one over the other, um, something sub D's can't do yet, uh, which they should be able to do, which maybe will get integrated um, later on. Um, the other nice thing um, is if you are mesh modeling, um, you know, some people find it easier for some stuff to do in mesh. You can easily go from mesh to sub D. Um, so there's a bunch of options there that we'll go over. Uh, but in short, if I just select the sub D object here, so you went, you see, we went back. So it's exactly from the original sub D, right? If you started with a mesh, you can again go to sub D really easily. And then you can do two nerves.
two nerves, right? So I just went from mesh to sub D to nerves. So it's a really nice system that they're implementing in, in a way that you can more fluidly go between these different types of geometries. Um, and the last thing I'll say about sub D, because we'll do a, a, a deep dive in the actual webinar, um, is by pressing tab is your display. And you'll see, so tab changes sub D displays um, to like faceted and smooth. And you'll see when I change this sub D to faceted, that it actually looks like the mesh geometry, which it should. So the next thing that I'll talk about is, is pufferfish. So pufferfish uh, is uh, 318 components right now, um, a lot of categories, and they mostly deal with tweens and blending. So if you go through, you'll see like tween meshes, tween consecutive, tween through. Um, for numbers, the same options. For points, the same options. And for work in progress seven, Pufferfish also has sub D specific components um, for averaging sub Ds, tweening sub Ds, mirror cutting sub Ds, and making twisted boxes on sub Ds. And what we'll look at in, in the full webinar is different all the different ways you can make these twisted boxes on different types of geometries. And this whole panel here, there's just a whole bunch of ways to really create these twisted boxes. So let's briefly look at what a twisted box is. So I'm just going to make a surface here. I'm going to rebuild it. And I'm just going to actually rebuild it less. And I'm just going to deform this surface a bit just to get a little bit of deformation there. So there's only a few ways to make twisted boxes um, aside from doing it manually in Grasshopper. And the way that that is, is um, the, the, the main way is called surface box, right? And this makes twisted boxes on a surface. So I'll get my surface. Here and it wants a um, it wants a domain. So what you have to do there is um, construct domain. Uh, or actually, um, deconstruct domain um, two. I tend to use uh, my own components here. So it's actually divide domain. I, I forget the name because it's been so long since I actually use these because I use my own components now in Pufferfish, which we'll go over. Um, so you want to divide the domain. This surface has a U and V domain, um, and you want to divide that. Right now it's default by 10, 10. Uh, let's say. 50, right? So you'll see that we're making twisted boxes there. And twisted box is just a space that you can deform objects into, morph them into, basically. And then it wants a height. And this height's going to be offset normal from the surface. So now you have your... Um, your twisted boxes, you have to, we can morph stuff into them. So what we can do is we can get a, we can get a sub D box. That is a tube. We want the box. And that's fine. Uh, 
And I'm just going to do like pretty much what I did before. I'm just going to shift click. And um, then I'm going to scale by holding shift and then tapping control to do something like that. And then I'll just delete those so that we have this shape here. That will just be the shape that we, we look at for now. The size doesn't matter. Um, what matters is the size of this thing in reference to a reference box to how that it morphs into, into there. So we'll get our sub D because now you have a sub D object type in only in Grasshopper for um, the Rhino work in progress, Rhino 7. Set that one sub D. We'll get, we'll get a, um, we'll get a bounding box. And that will be our reference. And then what we're going to do is use the box morph. So you have the box morph, and then we'll do uh, reference. We'll, oh, geometry will be our sub D, and then the bounding box will be our reference, and then the twisted boxes will be the target. And there you go. Now, one thing you'll notice about sub Ds, if you, if you saw it, it took a bit of time to actually morph into there, um, which can be annoying. And that's, uh, that's why uh, with with morphing, you kind of always want to use meshes. And so the really nice thing is the Grasshopper version for Rhino 7 Work in Progress also has sub D tools right here. There's a few of them now, um, they're, but they're pretty useful. And the one that's really useful is the sub D control polygon. So we can actually get that control polygon of the sub D, right? Which is basically, it's the mesh version. And now if I use that mesh here, you'll see how much uh, quicker that you see how quick it populated. So if I, if I, again, just there, there's no lag at all in that, um, where there's, there was before. So if I, again, if I unplug this and just plug it in, you see how quick it was. Whereas if I put the sub D, you see, there's a bit of a lag there. Um, so sometimes you want to use the mesh, uh, and we'll explain what situations uh, you may want to use a mesh, you may not want to use the mesh. But then once you've morphed your stuff, you can always, with these Grasshopper sub D tools um, in the, the vanilla uh, native Grasshopper for Rhino 7 work in progress, is then you can go um, sub D for mesh, and you can go back to sub Ds. Um, and you have your sub Ds again. Okay. So one thing you'll notice is that it's uh, not smooth in those sections. So what we'll do is um, what you need to do is either join the sub Ds, um, which unfortunately there's no join sub D component yet. Um, and it's not in Rhino Common uh, yet for use. So you have to either do it in Rhino, so you can bake this and join it in Rhino, uh, like I showed before, so you can smooth all that. Or you can just use Pufferfish um, Rebuild Mesh with Join. And you're basically going to join this mesh. And then you're going to do, uh, you're just going to clean it up, uh, basically remove duplicate vertices. Um, call, call um, unused vertices and faces. Recompute the uh, recompute the normals. Unify the directions, um, and then we'll give it a welding tolerance just to pick up any possible inaccuracies um, in in mesh vertices. So now that we've welded that all together, basically. Um, what we can do now is turn that into a sub D. Um, there you go. And now you'll see everything, see that like all those connections are smooth together now. So if we bake that, now you have your, now you have your sub D. Uh, and what's really nice is, with the sub D's since they're, they're, you can do like after the fact kind of stuff 
Um, so I can go through here and like I can, you know, still easily like edit stuff. Like, so if I wanted to like make an extrusion or um, I don't know, like let's say I wanted to to like maybe bridge the bridge these areas. Um, so again, like the the workflow that I like to use, both manual and uh, uh, parametric, with Grasshopper, um, a lot of back and forth. Um, so again, like there, so I can make a bridge there. I could say like it wants like three. Um, yeah. So like there, I just made a bridge, right? So you can go in and make like these more manual edits too, because the sub D is so easy and fluid to work with. So the last thing uh, that I want to look at is, you know, so that's like the basic system of grasshoppers uh, and um, is surface twisted box. And then there's actually the twisted box component from grasshopper, which is really kind of a pain to use because you have to know all eight points of your box in order and plug them in the right order. Um, but pufferfish has all of these different ways that we'll explore on how to create twisted box networks. And what will the, the, the simple one right now is just twisted box surface, um, which is my equivalent of this component here, the uh, surface box. And what we'll do is again, take that surface. So let me actually just show that surface. Um, and what this component does is it also needs a thickness. But there's two differences. The first difference is that it uses parameters for UV. And the third difference, uh, the second difference is that it has W parameters, which you can put layers in the thickness. So you'll see here I have two layers of twisted boxes in the thickness. Um, so if I get a graph, graph mapper, get a range and um, yeah. and so like pufferfish is actually the, the first the first plugin to do things um, in this way with the twisted boxes um, and it does we do pufferfish does this with a bunch of other things too for instance anything called parameter parameter extrude mesh parameter plane mesh so it's kind of like a uh, serve parameter service mesh. So instead of using division counts, you're using parameters. And that was the, the original idea of Pufferfish. And um, the reason I made it is because something like that didn't exist uh, yet. And it was just really annoying to do manually. And of course, we need, I had a, a small, like, something like that. Okay, so you see it's like division count, um, division count, but because you're using parameters, you can adjust those values, you see? Um, so yeah, so then for V, you can do it in the V direction as well. So there's the V. And then, uh, you can also do it in the W direction. So if I add more height here, right, you can add layers in the W direction. And so that's the main difference. Um, uh, well, one is there's a lot more ways to do things in Puffish with twisted boxes, but two is it gives you more access over to how these things are spaced. Um, and again, like I said, like it just didn't exist before, um, and it was just some the way that I wanted to work, and it's just a really nice way to work. The thing about Powerfish also is this is an uh, intermediate course, but as you'll find throughout the course, is Powerfish really the goal is it makes intermediate uh, or advanced level um, procedures, which would be difficult uh, in native Grasshopper, seem easy and and fun to use. Um, that even like a, I think a beginner can do it.
And the last thing we'll go over now is if we have this geometry here. Um, Pufferfish also has a special morph component, um, which is uh, morphed to twisted box, which is like the box morph, but it's multi-threaded. So with a lot of stuff, it will be a lot faster. Um, so I just use that um, mostly just for the speed of things. Um, so you see, like there was like no calculation time there, and so those are all now morphed into there. Um, let's just turn this off. And so you see you have all your objects morphed into that box. And again, like I like I mentioned, it's all about the relationship to this ref from this reference box to our geometry that we want to morph. So if I turn this box on and get the volume. And um, let's just say I move it. So I'll move this um, box by the, um, oh, I'll move and scale it, let's see. So I'll scale it um, by the center, by, uh, I don't know, something like that. So there's the scale. Um, well, we're just making the scale transform for now because um, we'll combine transforms. It's just a better way to work. Uh, and then we'll get the Z. And let's create a move transform. So we have our two transforms here. We'll just combine them uh, with compound. So just plug those both in and do transform. So this is the way to work with transforms um, because it just, making transforms doesn't take a lot of information and you don't want to transform your object multiple times. You want to transform it once. So you just make a compound transformation um, and we'll transform this box, right? So now both transforms are transforming this box, right? So there's our scale. And there's our move. Uh, let's make that more. Right. So if I put this to zero and put this to one, that's the default box. So if we look at here, if we use this as our reference, I'll just get a preview so we can see it easier. And turn off uh, my mesh edges. And we can even go to Arctic so we can see it easier. Um, and I'll just turn on this box so we can see. So the so again, it's exactly bounding, so everything's going to exactly connect. Um, but if I scale this up, those are going to get smaller, right? Because the rep the the, the relationship of this to this box is going to be a relationship of this to the twisted boxes. So if I scale it down, those are going to get bigger, smaller. Um, and then same if I move this, if I move this box up, those ones are going to go down in relation to their boxes, right? Because it's always in relationship of the object to the box. So that's the, the basic gist uh, of, um, of the, the two systems we'll be looking at mostly, twisted boxes and sub Ds, how to combine those all together to make really, really awesome looking stuff. Um, you can follow me on Instagram to see a lot of the kind of stuff I'm doing with Pufferfish. Um, you'll see things other people are doing Pufferfish that I post um, if you've not seen them already. Um, and you can also follow uh, me on Design Morphine to also see some of that, uh, some of that work. Um, so I hope you will join the webinar. Um, it's going to be a really fun uh, and informative time with uh, learning 
basically what the, the future of Rhino, um, Rhino's modeling environment will be. Thank you.